the Thoughty Orty podcast. If you were autistic, what would you look for in terms of like ADHD traits? Like, you know, you might feel a lot of, you know, because of that crossover, you might be like a bit tentative about sort of exploring the the world of ADHD because that, you know, as you said, the lines are very, very blurry between the two. Mm-hmm. What would you if if you were an autistic individual, what would you what would you look for in in terms of like, hey, that you know, this isn't sort of typically autistic experience. Maybe I should should go and sort of explore it a bit more. Yeah. I would say that controlling impulsive behaviors, racing thoughts, sure. daydreaming. Mm. being overly active, jumping from task to task. Yeah. You know, starting, getting sidetracked, come like Mm -hmm. doing one thing, but then getting sidetracked by other things. Yeah. Because the other, a lot of the other things overlap. Yes. Yeah. I think that's really good because it's not, you know, I suppose they're jumping from task to task. It's it's less so like an autism thing because of that like intense focus and the the inertia and having to sort of break that and switch to another thing. Like sometimes it can take me any anyway, depending on my mental health and sort of how much you know I've done, you know, what my energy levels are like. I can, you know, sometimes it might take me about 15 minutes to kind of rearrange my head. It's like if if I if I go from perhaps work and I'm just like bang on as soon as I finish work, I get my clothes, I get the get my bag, go to the gym, I couldn't do that. It would just absolutely like send waves of anxiety through my body. I just wouldn't know where my head's at. And when I got to the gym, I'd be like, How did I get here? And you know, this doesn't feel right. And it's almost like I have to kind of prep myself in order to make the jump from doing something like work-wise into rest and then preparing myself to go into something else. And there's those transitions, right? They're really hard. Mm -hmm. So doing those and transitions are hard for ADHD years too, but like it could be really hard for someone with autism. So Mm -hmm. that prep work, like you said, whether it be an alarm or telling yourself, okay, you know, by this time I'm going to do X, Y, Z and I'm going to have this ready. And then, you know, I'm going to need to go here. Lots of prep work, like you said. I think another thing that, you know, I I think that was a really great list of sort of things that you can look out for because I think because of our tendency to be a lot more self-focused and want to, to want, we kind of crave that feeling of just being, Fix, fixated on something because it kind of it blurs out the sensory world it blurs out everything that's going on so we don't we don't tend to have for, for well i don't tend to have from a lot of my experiences that sort of daydreaming aspect i won't just kind of just get lost in thought a lot i will have processing blips where i just forget everything that we're talking about and you know sort of it's like my brain cuts off but I don't like go off into thought and sort of follow that kind of train of thought around and sort of take different directions. I saw some some really funny, funny memes. You have like uh, someone did this. Um, I don't know if it's a meme, but they did a reel where they were talking. They were explaining how it feels to be ADHD. I don't know if I'm able to do this, but I'll give it a go. So like someone will ask them. Oh, how's your day been? And they go, well, how's my day? Well, I did this and, you know, at work. And, but then the, I saw, I saw that lady, Karen, who was, you know, I'd, you know, you know what she's like and the issue, you know, to be honest, yes. I, yeah. Anyone who kind of acts like that towards me, it's, it, it's kind of a big of a red flag. It's kind of like my ex and my ex was, you know, he had all sorts of these kind of issues. <laughs> Right. I you really go like, to- like baseball for some reason. <laughs> you go to all these different tangents and you can go I never on do and on and on. <laughs> I remember one of my friends growing up and it's almost like she got it out of me. 
she would go like this when I was talking and I was undiagnosed ADHD. <laughs> She's just like, like get to the point. I remember yeah. when I was even in ADHD coaching training, one person I was like sample coaching with, she was in my class. She was like, okay, you got there. You got there yeah. finally. Yeah. But it, it, we're verbal processors. So sometimes we don't even know like mm. what it is until we get there. So it's that like more thinking out loud. Correct. Because for me, it's it's internal. It's like, I'll go quiet for like five, 10 seconds. I'll think about it and then I'll speak. Like um, Yes. Yes. So my assistant who has autism as well, uh, she's like that as well. So she'll be very quiet. I can tell when, um, you know, she's thinking about something, how she wants to say it to me. Um, if she's upset about something or like she has too much stimulation going on, I can see that, you know, things will kind of like break down a little bit and she'll need time to recover. Yeah. Yeah. So there's those little nuances. Hey, YouTube, just popping on to say, if you have enjoyed this podcast clip so far, why not check out the full episode, which you can find on my YouTube channel, on Spotify, Google, Apple, pretty much anywhere that you would want to find it. And if you have enjoyed this, please make sure to like, uh, drop me a subscribe if you want to see more stuff from me and drop a comment down below because it really does help with the algorithm. Other than that, you can check out my Instagram, which is in the link tree down below in all of my videos. There's daily blogs, weekly updates on the podcast and lots of other stuff that you won't find here on YouTube. Hope you've enjoyed this clip and I'll let you get back to it. Mm -hmm. I suppose, suppose looking, looking from the other side, I mean, I know I know that that for you personally, you're not autistic. I suppose if you're if you're an ADHD, you know, what, what could you possibly look for about, you know, possibly pursuing an autism diagnosis? I mean, from, from, from my experience, it tends to be like the, the opposite way around, but I imagine that it could, it could definitely happen. Yeah. Yes, definitely. I if I was to pitch in a couple of things, I think definitely the Alexify me aspect of things, not being able to identify, I'd, um, notice or sort of tie emotions to events. Um, that tends to be something that that autistic people experience a lot. And also the the aspects of cognitive empathy, like like I said about sort of monitoring indirect communication. I'd say that those two, for me, those are like the biggest things when it comes to social emotional stuff with like autism. Yeah. What, what do you think? Do you think there's anything that you would add? Yeah, I think for the hyper ADHD, hyperactive, impulsive type, it's easier to spot the ADHD very often. And, you know, if they've masked or adapted in certain ways or they're lower on the spectrum maybe of AD, of autism, they might just, the ADHD might be more prominent in them and that's mm -hmm. what they might be diagnosed with first. And also... There's so much information on ADHD out there. I know we spoke about that at this point, and I think the stigma has been broken a lot more, and it hasn't been enough yet with autism. So I think that yeah. people might identify more if they have both with ADHD, and then sure. maybe, I don't know, this is- That's theory. really interesting. It's like that that kind of stigmatizing, because I think, I think there's a lot of- I don't know. I feel like a lot of people, it it feels, I mean, to, to me, if, you know, me thinking about me possibly having some AD, ADD, ADHD, um, it feels less sort of intrusive on my identity. And it's more kind of, you know, I think of people who are ADHD as they're like fun, they're like positive to be around. And it's like, but when you think of like autism in terms of like the stigma and myths, it's like, oh, you're yeah. socially inept. You're a bit weird. You have flat right. affect. You're not very cool. Right. You and you can just... challenge that too, right? Because everyone, yeah. it's a spectrum. Sure. Hey, YouTube, just popping on to say, if you have enjoyed this podcast clip, 
So far, why not check out the full episode, which you can find on my YouTube channel, on Spotify, Google, Apple, pretty much anywhere that you would want to find it. And if you have enjoyed this, please make sure to like, uh, drop me a subscribe if you want to see more stuff from me, and drop a comment down below because it really does help with the algorithm. Other than that, you can check out my Instagram, which is in the link tree down below in all of my videos. There's daily blogs, weekly updates on the podcast, and lots of other stuff that you won't find here on YouTube. Hope you've enjoyed this clip, and I'll let you get back to it.